All right, guys, let's look at lesson one of unit five, which is the wave nature of light. So what does that mean? When we talk about the electronic structure of the atom, so where the electrons are, you must first understand uh, what electromagnetic radiation is. Electromagnetic radiation is a form of wave-like behavior as it travels through space. So what does that mean? That means that waves are a form of matter and light travels in waves. So characteristics of a wave. So we have the origin in the middle, then we have the wavelength. The wavelength is the distance that it travels from crest to crest or trough to trough, and the amplitude is the height of the wave. So like we said, the distance between two corresponding points on adjacent waves is the wavelength. The height of the wave between the origin and the crest, the crest is the top, or the origin and the trough, which is the bottom, is called the amplitude, so how high the wave is. So, the number of waves that pass a given point per unit of time is called frequency. So this top wave here has a high frequency because there's more waves in this span of time than in the bottom one. The bottom one has a low frequency. So for waves that travel at the same velocity, the longer the wavelength, the smaller the frequency. So this wave at the bottom has a longer wavelength, so it has a shorter frequency. So here's our electromagnetic spectrum. Wavelength increases going to the right, frequency increases going to the left. Us as humans can only see between 400 to 750 nanometers, and that's where the visible region is. But gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, infrared, microwaves, and radio waves um, have the, are the different types of electromagnetic radiation. Wavelength increases as you go to the right. So radio waves have high frequency, or excuse me, have high wavelength, but low frequency. Gamma rays have a low wavelength and a high frequency. So, all electromagnetic radiation travels at the same velocity, the speed of light, which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So, we can come up with this equation. This equation is C, which is the speed of light, is equal to the wavelength of the wave times the frequency. So, and again, this equation sets it up so that if your wavelength is large, your frequency will be small. If your frequency is large, your wavelength will be small. So they are indirectly related because when one goes up, the other one goes down. So let's look at an example problem. Calculate the frequency of light if the wavelength is 3.8 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. So the first thing we're going to do is we need our equation. C equals lambda nu, or wavelength times frequency. So we know that our C is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth is equal to our wavelength, 3.8 times 10 to the negative seventh meters times frequency. To solve for this, we're going to divide each side by our wavelength. So that cancels out. And our frequency is 4.6 times 10 to the 14th. These problems are going to be tough for some of you because you have to remember how to type in a 10 to the power into your calculator. If you forget, Unit 1, when we talked about scientific notation, goes over instructions on how to do that. If you remember, remember you have to hit that second EE button or that EXP button to type this in your calculator correctly. Let's look at a different example. Calculate the frequency of light if the wavelength is 650 nanometers. And since this is in nanometers and the speed of light is in meters per second, we need to do a conversion first. So we need to convert 650 nanometers to meters. So I told you how many meters are in one nanometer, so we're going to set this up. 650 nanometers is um, going to uh, be multiplied by 1.0 times 10 to the minus 9th meters to get 6.50 times 10 to the minus 7th meters. So now that we have a wavelength in meters, we can plug it into our equation. So C equals lambda nu. So the speed of light is equal to our wavelength times frequency. We have to solve for frequency. So again, divide each side by our wavelength. And we get a frequency of 4.61 times 10 to the 14th. We're going to do a lot more of these practice in your practice packet. 
but let's have you try one on your own. So pause this and unpause when you're ready. Great, well what did you come up with? The first thing you should have done is converted your wavelengths to meters because you cannot plug this directly into our equation C equals lambda nu. We need this to be in meters first. So convert to meters, then plug into your equation. Divide each side by your wavelength, and you should have gotten 6.00 times 10 to the 14th hertz, which is the unit for frequency. All right, check your understanding. We are going to go over this problem in class tomorrow. Have a great day.